come down? Um, originally, I came down to protest the uh, influence of the financial sector in our democracy. They write the laws, they control the law enforcement, uh, and they don't follow the laws they write. Uh, and essentially, they are just attempting to funnel the last remaining wealth of the middle class into their pockets. And uh, I think it's time for people to stand up and tell them that that's not okay. But since I've been here, I've become a little more interested in kind of the like uh, the infrastructure. It's autonomous, it's organic, and I think it's a viable model that's like alternative to world capitalism. People just helping each other, volunteering, caring about their community. Um, oh, it's been evolving like crazy. Uh, I was here the first weekend and it was like a couple hundred people. There were cops lined around the entire thing. There wasn't any free food or any of that and, and it's, it's really grown. It's getting a lot more mature. How have the police treated you? Well, Personally, uh, one tried to kill me on the Brooklyn Bridge. So really? <laughs> you were on the Brooklyn Bridge? How yeah. Was that? Uh, it was. It was intense. They absolutely, definitely led us on there to be arrested. Like yeah. it, it was absolutely entrapment. But I saw that we were being, you know, penned in to be arrested. So I tried to climb the scaffolding to get to the walkway, and a cop grabbed my leg and tried to pull me off. And it's like a 500 foot drop to the river. So, yeah. but uh, I mean, I think basically, you know, there are people, there are cops who came down here to volunteer, you know, because they like to hit people with clubs. But I think most of them are, you know, they're were detailed this duty. They have families that they love that they're trying to support. And, and in many ways, they're being screwed over by the 1% the and yeah, worse than we are. They're union guys, individuals, too. Do you think that they support this, even though they uh, can? I think they do. I've talked to more than a couple who definitely support it. Next year, the NYPD is receiving a 26% pension cut because of the crisis on Wall Street. So they they can, you know, I, I don't see that. They can't be sympathetic to our message. Um, and, you know, there's the white shirts and the blue shirts. The blue shirts are regular, you know, they're privates and sergeants and they're working men and women. They spend their days on the streets, you know, dealing with the worst people in our society. The white shirts, they're paper pushers. They sit behind desks and they sign orders that ruin people's lives and, you know, steal people's houses and send people to jail for no reason. So I have no sympathy for them. They're the bosses. I, 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 I really don't have anything to say to them, but, you know, the blue collar police, uh, they, they have as much, just as much stake in this as we do. Do you know anybody else who was a victim of any police brutality? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple girl. I know, you've probably seen the pepper spray video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know a girl who had her hands flexi cuffed so tightly that like she still doesn't have all her feeling back in her fingers. Like two weeks later, uh, when you get arrested, they don't give you a bathroom break for like ten hours. And uh, actually, apparently the. Uh, the transit workers union is refusing to drive the buses full of arrested protesters because everybody pisses everywhere. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I think it's good that there is one specific solution. Absolutely. <laughs> well, there's, there's several reasons that that's the strength. Uh, I mean, we're here to uh, claim to represent the 99%. There's such a diversity of opinion amongst that, that chunk of the population that it would be grossly unfair to try to, you know, send out bullet points or demands that not, you know, not, not everyone would agree with. So this is kind of a meta movement. You know, you can bring your own movement here and have a space and a forum to, to, to you know, work on it and to network and everything. But the thing as a whole, it, it, it's more of an emerging culture than it is, it, uh, you know, a, an actual protest. This is an open forum on what a new America is going to look like. Do you like how it's leaderless? I mean, you can't, you can't arrest yeah. a leader. Well, I mean, leaderless. you know, look at look at our history. When when the CIA wanted to get rid of the Black Panther Party, they put Huey Newton in jail and they shot Fred Hampton. They can't do that here. They can't, you know, they, they, what are they going to do? Arrest seven thousand of us? On the day that they arrested seven hundred on the Brooklyn Bridge, they had to open up eight precincts just to fit us all in there and process us. So, you know, tactically, it would be a nightmare to arrest everybody in here. And uh, you know, in terms of press, Bloomberg and Obama, you know. Upper middle class white protesters getting their heads beaten in by police yeah. batons, that's not going to fly. So I think the time has passed for them to be able to uh, get us out of here. And, and now we really have to figure out, you know, this space is ours now. It's effectively, I, I don't really consider it part of the United States anymore. Uh, so we have to figure out what to do with it. And I think we're doing a great job because, you know, this, this is a better functioning government than the U.S. government. We have free food, free clothing, free housing, free health care. I mean, that's, that's above and beyond anything that the U.S. government's supplying us.
Are you gonna stay here when it gets colder? Uh, yes, I am. I have a, I'm a carpenter upstate, so I gotta go home to work during the week, but yeah, tents, uh, sleeping bags. Um, I've heard some students from Columbia are coming down to uh, install solar panel heaters. So, uh, I mean, a lot of people say once the snow hits the ground, this is gonna dissipate, but I know people who quit their jobs to be here, really? moved all the way across the country. I met a girl who left her fiance because he didn't want her to go. Like I'm Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, Oregon, there we go. Look at this man, he's from, you know, he's from 4,000 miles away and he's not going home. So, I mean, yeah. Do you think that policymakers will make some sort of change? Well, I don't think they're going to make a change just based on the the uh, the strength and the, you know, the anger of our voices. I think they're going to have to make a change once 50,000 people park themselves in front of the stock exchange and hold the American economy hostage until we get some of our demands listened to. That's my personal opinion, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and there have been, you know, there's been a couple congressmen that come down here and, uh, you know, I saw Basically, a congressman was trying to speak to this crowd and talk about democracy and voting for the Democratic Party. He got booed away. He had to leave. Kanye West was down here, and everybody told him to get the hell out. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, we have a representative democracy, which maybe was, you know, adequate 300 years ago, but now we have 335 representatives for 300 million people. And, and you know, you're, you're signing away your rights to monolithic corporations and to big government. You're never going to meet these people. You're never going to be able to hold them accountable. Uh, my personal opinion, I don't think the government functions above the community level. There can be a loose confederation for, for things that we need to come together for, but the people that are making the decisions that run your life, they have to be accountable to you and you only. So if you can't go next door and tell them what's wrong, then, you know, there's this huge disconnect there and it, it just lends itself to abuse of power so easily. Uh, I think what we need to think about both politically and economically is, is relocalizing. You know, the means of production, I hate to use a Marxist term, but you know, we, we can't we have the capacity both technologically and organizationally to to make our communities able to produce again. I mean we, we have the technology for you know widespread organic farming, for, for manufacturing in our own towns. There's no reason we need to be sending jobs and money and, and, and all this stuff overseas and to, to huge corporations, we can do it ourselves. All it takes is a little participation. So I'm, I'm here because of, you know, I want to see more participatory economics. I want to see more participatory democracy. And I, I, you know, what I've seen so far has been totally inspiring. It's changed my entire life. Um, can you give a little uh, brief introduction about yourself? Oh yeah, uh, my name is Max Richmond. I'm a carpenter from Dutchess County, uh, upstate New York, and uh, I've been here for about five weeks. Five, yeah. five weeks? Yeah. Well, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I gotta go home tomorrow. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Pretty good.